everybody, welcome to the beautiful Colorado Rocky Mountains and check this out. I have brought along the best Chevrolet off-roader they make, the Colorado ZR2. And now I think my dad's probably gonna have some words of disagreement. Question, why, why is your truck prosthetic arm beige? Why is your truck older than the Magna Carta, Tommy? <laughs> I have brought the most off-road worthy Chevy there is, and then of course is the Silverado ZR2. And Tommy, let's compare and find out which of these two trucks is the best, most off-road worthy Chevy pickup truck they make. And we're gonna do that by driving it up Webster Pass here in the beautiful Colorado Rockies. So Tommy, a little bit of an unfair competition, right? We're comparing a mid-size truck to a full-size truck. We're comparing a brand new truck to what is, you know, an outgoing truck. So I think obviously the Silverado has a lot going for it. Well, hold on there. This is still a brand new truck. It's just a little bit long in the tooth of Colorado. And I think what you'll find is that even though it may be a few years old, uh, they recently updated the front end. It looks really quite good and it still has absolutely everything you need for an amazing day out on the trail. This thing is a beast. When you are out exploring our beautiful trail network, it can be kind of confusing as to where to go, but that's where Onyx Off-Road comes in. The best off-road navigation software anywhere. You can download maps ahead of time when you're in service, so when you come out here in the middle of nowhere, you know exactly where to go, you're never lost, and it even integrates with Apple CarPlay. Yeah, you know, I'm a little jealous of just how, um, shall we call it, unfat you are, <laughs> how slim you are, how uh, narrow you are. Well, thank you. I've eaten nothing but kale protein shakes for the last year. I appreciate it. But the truck is also pretty narrow as well. And that certainly is an advantage, right? The Colorado is much more maneuverable when you're out on the rocks and between the trees. However, the small size means it's not quite as capable in terms of towing. It can tow, what, 6,000, 6,500, somewhere in that territory? What can the ZR2 Silverado tow? I'm looking at over 10,000 pounds. Uh, the thing I love about this truck... You know, unlike, let's say, the trucks that it competes with directly, which would be like a Toyota T Tundra TRD Pro or um, a Ford F-150 Tremor, right? It doesn't have the horsepower to compete with a TRX or a Raptor. What it does have, though, is all of the truck goodness that you want in a vehicle that is ultimately off-road capable. So it's kind of the biggest Swiss Army knife in your bucket of tools. So it can tow, it can haul. You know, it can do all the truck stuff, and yet it's incredibly capable off-road. The Colorado ZR2 is independent front suspension, a solid rear axle, and these really sophisticated DSSV Multimatic shocks. So you know what Tommy said about the shocks and the independent suspension and the rear solid axle? Same thing in this truck, except bigger and better. This Colorado ZR2 is running a set of Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires. That's right, old faithful. Now it's about a 32 inch tall tire wrapped around a 17 inch wheel. Really great tire and a really capable setup. So just like the Colorado, I've got Goodyear Wranglers, except these are Territory MTs, which are newer, also bigger, and also better. This ZR2 is running a 3.6 liter V6, naturally aspirated, direct injected, right around 300 horsepower, and that is made into an eight speed automatic transmission. You know, I think there's a theme that's developing here and it continues under the hood. So the Silverado ZR2, of course, has a V8, two more cylinders. 120-ish more horsepower, a 10-speed, so that's uh, two more gears, and 460 pound-foot of torque. And incredibly, the fuel economy on this full-size truck is not that much worse than on that mid-size truck. Let's talk off-road tech in the Colorado ZR2. Now, first of all, I'm gonna have to grab the key out of my pocket because it still has a good old-fashioned blade. Stick that in the ignition and start her up. Now this vehicle does have four wheel drive with a low range. I can activate that like such, just twist the knob, and then it also has an off-road mode. Now beyond that, check this out down here, we have a rear locking diff and even a front locking diff. So a huge amount of traction aids in the Colorado. So unlike the Colorado ZR2, I've actually got an interior that looks like it was designed on a computer versus a pen 
pencil and draftsmanship back in the 1800s. I mean, look at this, two digital screens and two lockers. So I've got the same front and rear locker that Colorado has. Plus, check this out. I've got a complete suite of 360 degree cameras so I can see what's in front of me. I can see what's behind me. I can see what's next to me. I can even use it if I were towing. This is a thoroughly modern, dare I say it, sexy interior whereas the Colorado looks like it needs a refresh five years ago. So uh, where are your rock sliders? You know, we could have ordered rock sliders, but uh, Andre wanted to get the base, and I say that very loosely, ZR2, so we didn't get rock sliders or a giant sunroof. Now, what about price, right? How much did this ZR2 cost us? <sighs> That's a tough question, Tommy, because when we bought it, it was $67,000. If you wanted to order it now, it would be $3,000 more, so $70,000. And this truck, as you see it equipped, it's actually pretty affordable, under fifty dollars even under $46,000, mid $45,000 range, so uh, pretty pretty good value. Yeah, dude, I mean, affordable, $50,000, $70,000, these are numbers that we're tossing around, but two years ago, they would have seemed astronomical. The other cool thing about the Colorado is at least in this generation, it's still available in a diesel. Uh, and this one isn't, even though Chevy makes a three liter diesel that you can put into a Silverado. Go figure, huh? Very true, yeah, that little uh, Duramax they have in this thing is a game changer. You know, we have a lot of viewers that have ZR2 Colorados, and I run into a lot of you guys out on the trails, which is really cool, and every single person I talk to loves them. They're durable, they're simple trucks, uh, they're not flashy by 2022 standards, but they definitely get the job done. You know, Chevy touts these uh, Multimatic DSSV shocks, right, that they're Formula One technology, um, and they're, you know, Good, but I gotta tell you, Tommy, I'm not sure, and this is from a lot of you of experience, that they're any better off road than like the Fox or the Bill Stein version of the shock. In fact, they both have pretty rough rides. Especially when you're doing kind of slow speed trail running, uh, you get a lot of kind of head toss and a lot of back and forth movement just because the suspension is very, very hard. It, that's just how they engineered it. Now, uh, certain other vehicles in this class, like the uh, Gladiator Rubicon with the sway bar disconnected, I think the Tacoma TRD Pro, to a large extent, have much smoother rides than the Colorado. This is a little bit stiffer. The plus side is on the road in the twisties. It does handle quite well for an off-road truck. Yeah, and then the last improvement I think Chevy could do, and this is something that, that I don't understand why Chevy doesn't do it. Maybe it's cafe standards. Maybe it has to do with fuel economy. But both of these trucks need bigger uh, tires from the factory. They are, in certain respects, quite difficult to put big tires on. So that Silverado especially has been around uh, for enough months now where folks are trying to modify them with 35s and 37s. And the way the fender openings work and the way that especially the upper control arm is positioned, it's very difficult to stick a larger tire on that Silverado. But overall, the Colorado is still one of the most capable out-of-the-box trucks. And I know, you know, $45,000 is a lot of money. And especially when you consider some of the technology or lack thereof in this Colorado, like I'm not looking at adaptive cruise in this model. I'm not looking at lane centering. Um, there's a lot of features that are missing, which granted you could, you could spend more and get more features on this truck, but still compared to some of the competition, it's a little bit behind in some of the, the newest gear. But when you're out here, it's such a great machine. The lockers are quick to engage. The, uh, the angles are good. The front bumper design where it kind of cuts out around the approach angle is excellent this is a phenomenal four-wheel drive i think it's fair to say that we're both loving life if the trail gets narrower i may not be so much but right now i'm loving life dude tommy we call this the devil's crack and it's really a good test of grip articulation uh and i fear whip yeah so we've got this narrow v-notch and it's super steep so we're gonna run the colorado up first and then see how the silverado compares yeah i kind of fear uh that the devil's having a little bit of an incontinence issue today in this <laughs> crack <laughs> it's a bit of a stream but this definitely rewards uh being um svelte versus being wide all right we'll see what happens yeah full on wet devil's crack left side right side you can take out the side of a pickup truck super easily plus these uh, boulders that just roll down past the tires quite a test quite a test indeed all right so i'm going to try devil's crack 
with four wheel drive low and then I'm gonna leave it unlocked unless I need the lockers and we'll see how it does. Now this does have a hill start assist, which is a nice function. It applies the brakes when you're on these really steep grades, prevents you from rolling backwards. Now this vehicle doesn't have any crawl assist technologies. It's just basically use the accelerator to go up the hill. It doesn't have like a crawl control system like Toyota or Ford. So what we're gonna do is just use the right pedal, which I love, it's very refreshing now. And we'll see what happens. This is looking really rutted out and gnarly. And this river is not helping the situation. I may need to click on a locker here. We'll see how articulated we get. All right, well, we're bouncing a little bit. Ooh, I don't like that. Too close to the wall to uh, have some bouncing going on. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and try locking her up. Hey, you have to lock it up? Yep, I just locked it up. Oh, this is way too close to the wall for my liking. Let's try to avoid body damage. Ooh. Slipping toward this rock wall. This is kind of sketchy. That's where you want to have the control that the lockers offer. Hey, you're about to have a really big rock with your rear tire, Tommy. You're on it right now. You're going to have a hard time. Come on, grip, grip, grip. Oh, shit. It's going to throw you into the... Uh... I can't do it. You got to go back. I, I, I don't know if I can. All right, we got a little bit of a pickle here. We're about to take the side out of the truck, as you can tell. Uh, let me see if I can move that rock, Tommy. Hold on. <laughs> All right, I have removed the rock. Hold on, let me let me go in front again. All right, back up. Very slowly. All right. This is really loose shale. Ah, oh, it's just moving closer and closer. Is inches from this rock wall. I do have a downhill control assist, but I'm not going to use it because I just need very, very gentle applications of movement. Straight back, straight back. You're about to go down with your uh, driver's front, so don't be scared. It's just you go on the rock right now. You're coming off of it. You got full control. Man, I've never been more glued to a mirror. Good thing is, it has excellent brakes. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, all right, go, no, you're fine. Now, turn the wheel, uh, there you go, go like that, go like that. This is insanity. Good, that's what you do, Tommy. Turn back now. You just live the right way. This is where you want $5,000 worth of beater GMC Sonoma <laughs> instead of a brand new Colorado. And that's why we call it the Devil's Crack because, uh, yeah, it's devilishly hard and you can really do a lot of damage to a truck. Especially that lock right there, that's the, that's the hard one. All right, Tommy, I think it's my turn, huh? I'm, yeah, I I'm a little do. nervous. I don't think so, Dad. I, I've just, the whole thing is cantilevered now. It's gotten really bad this year toward the rock face. And unless you really want to risk the paint on $70,000 worth of Silverado, I say we keep going up and get above tree line, see where that takes us. You know, um, we're about to try to trade that in on our next truck. Uh, and uh, normally I'd be like, hell yeah, let's do this. Uh, but uh, I don't want to risk it uh, because you will take out the whole side of the truck. Yeah. And getting trucks today, any trucks is a challenge. Uh, and getting parts for any new trucks is even a bigger challenge. So guys, as much as I want to do the devil's crack, I think today, uh, we're lucky to walk away unscathed, uh, and I think I think it's not worth um, the potential trail damage to prove a point that I'm a bad driver. There's just no upside for me, right? <laughs> You're not a bad driver. It's just a wider truck, and I think uh, I think yeah, we may want to look at alternate routes. All right, let's head up uh, to Webster Pass. You know, Andre and I did a lot of discussing before we purchased the Silverado ZR2. And what threw us over the edge, specifically me, uh, for buying it was that we've had actually the Trail Boss as a long-term truck. We had it for about a year. What made it so cool was not only did I like the styling of it, you know, the kind of that 
fist into the wind look, uh, but it just worked as a truck. And sometimes that means a lot more than having the ultimate off-roader. And there were really two things that I didn't like about it. And both of those things have been addressed in this Silverado ZR2. First and foremost, the interior was just too plain Jane. It was just a little too industrial. You know, you didn't feel special driving it. The other thing I hate about it were the ranchos. And I always felt like, Chevy, come on, you guys can do better than ranchos. So when this came out and it had a brand new interior, uh, and of course it had uh, those Multimatic shocks, I thought to myself, this solves the two biggest problems uh, that the Silverado has. Uh, and so we definitely need to get it and we definitely need to test it. And over the last, I think, four months now, we've done about everything you can do with it. We've towed with it, we've gone off-road with it, we've hauled with it, we've used it as a work truck, and it's never failed to perform more than adequately. I mean, it's been a rock star of a truck, so I'm really sad to see it go. But at some point, you know, we're in the business of reviewing trucks, and you guys get bored of watching the same truck, so you know, we move them on. But please, in the comments, don't put the fact that we're trading it in on something else, and we'll reveal that soon enough that we didn't like it or that we didn't keep it long enough. In fact, I love this truck, but like I said, we're not in the business of collecting trucks, we're in the business of reviewing trucks, and we've done about all the reviewing we can, except for a long-term review, and the problem is, uh, there's so much money tied up in this, as I'm sure Tommy will point out, that we need to take the money out of this and put it in the next truck. We can't keep it for a year, because that would mean, you know, no fresh trucks to play with. The Chevy Colorado is due for an overhaul, and we know there's one coming because we've seen the camouflaged spy shots of the trucks up here testing. And we get this email a lot, should I wait for the new one or should I get the current one? And my answer is always get the current one because it's kind of like waiting for the next iPhone. Like, you know it's going to be better, but you're better off with a bird in the hand now than two in the bush. And I always love to go for the final years of a current production run rather than the first year of a brand new run. And this current Colorado has been around the block, but it is an excellent vehicle. It is well screwed together. The 3.6 liter V6 is sorted. The automatic is pretty good. The diff lockers are snappy, easy to engage. The electronics are a little dated, but they work. They do everything you need to. Um, it doesn't have LED headlights in this configuration, right? It's missing some of kind of the modern stuff you'd expect if you're paying near 45, 50 grand for a new vehicle. However, it's a great solid platform, infinitely customizable. There's lift kits and rack kits and everything you could ever want for the Colorado has been done, which means, you know, it's proven. Overall, it's a fantastic truck. It really is. I often forget that this truck is as good as it is because we get so wrapped up in the latest Tacomas and the newest Gladiators and what the Ranger's doing. But the Colorado, it's an old, reliable V6 powered truck, which will get you anywhere you'd ever want to go. So dad, which is the- Silverado. Okay. All right, why is that? Because it's the ultimate tool in your toolbox. It'll take you up here to over 12,000 feet above sea level. It'll do it with grace. It'll do it with poise. And it's got everything I need as a pickup truck. So it hauls, it tows, uh, and it looks badass. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. It's also almost like $70,000. Well, it is $70,000 or more. Yeah. I mean, so for that reason, I would take the Colorado. I think you get more capability because it's a smaller, lighter package. It doesn't tow as much, um, and the interior certainly isn't as nice. But I think for an everyday truck and for coming out here and exploring the Colorado Rockies, the Colorado is a choice for me. Well, you are absolutely wrong, Tommy, but I will respect and defend your right to be absolutely wrong. As always, this is Roman. And Tommy, check out another episode of TFL Off-Road coming soon. See you guys next time. Ciao.